So I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Some of you may get very bored with this very fast, but that's okay. This is for those of you out there who are interested in Biblical Hebrew, um, or if you just want to watch a few minutes of the video. I'm not offended. This is interesting to me, but I can understand that it could get quite boring after four or five minutes. We talk a lot of technical stuff, but for those of you who are interested in language, all that stuff could be quite interesting. So here we go. We are talking about Biblical Hebrew 101. I've taken Biblical Hebrew for the past three years of my life. My first uh, two semesters at Evangel, I took it five days a week, so 10 credits of Hebrew throughout the whole year. Uh, the next two years, it was just a three credit course every semester. So I have learned what I would consider to be a considerable amount of Biblical Hebrew. I am by no means an expert, but uh, that being said, taking three years of it, obviously I like it, obviously it interests me. So I figured I'd make uh, a little video talking about it. Uh, you know, most people don't know that much about it. So here we go. First of all, important to understand Biblical Hebrew is a dead language. What does that mean? People don't speak it anymore. So we're not learning to speak a language, we're learning to read a language. And that's it. So it's different than your typical language class. Also, it's very ancient, so we don't. There's some stuff that we don't understand. Um, there's a few words every now and then that we don't know the meaning of. So for that reason, it makes it more interesting, more difficult, whatever you want to say. It's also not uh, modern Hebrew, so it's kind of like how our English today could be compared to Shakespearean English, quite different. And you know, there's some words that we may use the same word, but it has a different meaning nowadays. Um, or it means something different contextually, so yeah. Also, about Biblical Hebrew, it does not have vowels. So originally it didn't have any vowels, and then they added some letters that would be equivalent to our V's, um, Y's, and H's that function basically a little bit like vowels, but they're really not vowels at the same time. And really that concept, it sounds like, oh, that'd be so hard to read a language without vowels, but it's really not that difficult if you try just like type out something or write out a sentence without vowels in it and like for example watch this you can read this you know that's it's not that hard um, and so it may seem tough at first really not that difficult so what does it look like like this pretty cool of course there are different fonts you can do um, but yeah, it looks super cool and ancient, all that stuff. Um, so in class, what did we do? Uh, so the first year, we just did a bunch of vocab and learning the grammar of the language. And then we would just sit around and translate, like, the whole time. So we just, I mean, in my three years, I've translated, oh, I don't even know, like, I mean, a lot of the Bible. You know, we translated the whole book of Zechariah. We translated almost all through the Minor Prophets. We translated the entire book of Judges, we translated Ruth, Jonah, all the small books we translated pretty much, and all the big books we translated bits and pieces. So, yes, uh, something else you should know, Biblical Hebrew, the narrative is quite different from poetry. So just kind of like in English, how poetry, the language is different, it's the same in Hebrew. You know, you might use a lot more flowery language, um, use lower frequency words, so like words that we don't use that much in everyday life um, and also you get things like um, wordplay you basically just get a whole bunch of weird stuff that makes poetry a lot harder I can't say I mean I would say it makes it at least three times harder it is very tough to translate compared to narrative narrative is quite easy um, after the first year of Hebrew you should be able to pick up and just like translate anywhere in narrative pretty much with a few difficulties. So we did translate Dead Sea Scrolls sometimes, which is also quite cool. Um, but we didn't do it that much because, you know, a lot of Dead Sea Scrolls, there's like fragments. Um, and it can be a little bit hard to read it. It's not like all typed out nice and neat. Um, but that being said, if you take Biblical Hebrew, you can translate Dead Sea Scrolls, which is pretty cool. So what is the benefit of Biblical Hebrew? 
a lot of people question that, you know, why are you studying that? We have all these modern translations. I mean, one of the reasons is that if you look at modern translations, they don't always agree on what something means. And if you know another language, um, like I can speak to this because I know French. Uh, je connais français, je parle aussi français. So, if you know another language, you can say that there are certain words or ideas that are in a certain language that are really hard to communicate in another language and you can't like describe it in a certain word. There might not be a word in English for a certain word in French, but if you know the language, then you know the idea and so translating it is not as tough. And so that's partly what we're trying to do in Hebrew and in translating that is knowing the language. So we don't want to just read it and have to like think about it in our brain so much, but we want to read it and know it like you know a second language. Um, and you just know all the nuances and stuff. And so basically what you gain is you know the language and so you're able to go to the direct text, which means you're able to pick up on a lot of linguistic nuances. Of course, the meaning of words, the different meanings it could have, um, different ways to translate it. You know, you pick up on acrostic stuff. Basically, there are a lot of benefits. Um, and so what I encourage you to do it, yes. Is it absolutely necessary? No. Uh, the translation of the Bible you have is just fine, but it is fun and I do believe that it is very beneficial to be able to look at the original text. Take a quick look at the books we have. So this is the Bible that most people use, uh, Biblia Hebraica Sudgartensia. And this is the Bible that we use. It will be your primary text if you take Hebrew. Also, Hebrew reads right to left, um, as some of you may know. Also, we use something called a Reader's Lexicon. This is basically so you don't have to do all the vocab. So Hebrew has a lot of vocab. We do vocab all the first year and we do all the words that occur 50 times or more. And then second year you do a little bit more than that. Basically the Reader's Lexicon tells you low frequency words, so words that you do not know, so that you can actually translate. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, that's Biblical Hebrew. Just living in the miracle, candles on my vehicle, eight nights, gonna shine invincible, no longer be divisible, born through the struggle, keep on moving through all this hustle.